because I'm one of the organizers along with Sally. Um, this is one of four cooking demonstrations and tastings that we plan to hold this year. So we hope if you enjoy yourselves, you'll come back again for the next one. Um, this program <coughs> concert is presented by the Randall Library Friends Association. We have with us the librarian from the Randall Library who wanted to just say a few words about the fund that is providing this series. Um, so it's the Randall Library Friends Association and the Margaret Berwin Memorial Fund. And if any of you know anything about Mar and by the way, I'm Melissa Corny, I'm the library director. If any of you know anything about Margaret Irwin, who is the um, uh, the person who's responsible <coughs> for the funding of this, she was extremely proactive for years and years and years with the Randall Library Friends Association. And so when she passed away, and her husband has been for many years um, the chairman of the board of trustees at the Randall Library. So they love to travel, and she loved to eat. <coughs> that it showed. But, um, she, but they actually would travel so that she could try new foods and try new recipes. So when she passed away and people were trying to figure out what it is they could do for, in her memory, they came up with the idea of a, how about you know travel books for the library or cookbooks for the library. And the library's good. And travel books and cookbooks. And um, between Liz and Sally and, and Tim Reed and the Randall Ladder Friends Association, they came up with the idea of having a special series that got people just as excited about travel and food as Mar Margaret was, and that would be the perfect thing to do in her memory. And so congratulations to friends and to Sally and to Liz, mm -hmm. because I think they have done a marvelous job. Respect. Thank you. So you want to mark your calendars, because our next, if you didn't have the opportunity to sign up front, is A Taste of Italy. That's on a Thursday, November 8th at the Randall Library. Unless we have a turnout like this, we might come back here. We'll see how that works out. And in January, we're going to do a tea party on a Sunday afternoon, 2 o'clock at the Randall Library with one of our historic tea sets. And that is with an expert in tea who actually this month is traveling in India to get a few more leaves, I think, and we will have a tasting of tea in January. The Randall Library also has a cookbook club. If you've not heard of it, you come into the library, there will be a selection of the single book that we're going to use. You check out a copy, make a recipe, and bring it along so that we can try a variety of recipes from the cookbook. Very fun. The next one will be the end of November, and it's Roast Figs and Sugar Snow, Winter Foods to Warm the Soul. And in December, it's the Cook's Illustrated All-Time Best Holiday Entertainment. So if you didn't get the dates, they are on a bookmark right up front, and you can catch that on your way out. But tonight we're here for apples. I hope you've all had an opportunity to try all the varieties that we have over there. They're all from Stowe. Uh, Shelburne Farms here in Stowe donated all of the apples there, so if you found one you liked, that's where you can go to find it, at least for the next week or two. This is what's in season right now. And the apples that we'll be cooked with tonight came from the Carver Hill Orchard also here. So, on we go. So tonight we're pleased to have our Stowe residents, um, Gianna Hoban and Deirdre Law, demonstrating how to cook with apples. Yay. <laughs> they are former scientists turned stay-at-home moms, turned small business operators. They are personal chefs and run a personal chef service they've been doing for the last two years. And they specialize in nutritious, seasonal, and dietary restricted meals. So let's welcome Gianna. Thank you, Liz. And really, if anybody should be doing an apple cooking class, it should be Liz, because she's the queen of apple pies. <laughs> anybody that knows her <laughs> knows. And actually, I borrowed the book for this, this class, the Apple Lover's Cookbook from Liz, so. <laughs> um, which is a great book, by the way, but I'll get to that. So anyway, thank you for coming. I'm Deirdre. I'm Gianna. And this is the Cooking with Apples talk. We live in Stowe, and Ooh. apples is our business, so we're not gonna talk about like, pies and crisps and donuts. cider donuts. Like, that's <laughs> here, you, you know where to get that. So we're gonna do like savory foods with um, most, mostly savory, like soup, mm -hmm. a little appetizer, a few main courses and sides. 
uh, with apples, and but of course with Finish apples. Finish with a little, little something. Yeah, you got to have something, something sweet. Sweet. So, okay. Uh, many of the recipes that I use, I, I can't speak for Jan. I think you got your recipes. I did some online stuff. Yeah. Did some combinations of recipes. Um, cookbooks are great. Sometimes they give you inspiration though, so you don't necessarily have to follow the recipe. You see something, you have an idea, well maybe something else would go really well with that and you create your own. So it's really a personal thing. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And I think apples are really interesting because there's so many things you can do with apples. They're not just pie, they're not just dessert, they're not just for snacking. It's a really fun thing to cook with. I totally took the recipes right out of the cookbook. Just, so. <laughs> but, and I used that Apple Lover's Cookbook, which is, it's a really good book because it's very simple. It's, it's not complicated, it's not overwhelming. There's not six million recipes. There's a bunch of very good apple recipes, but there's also um, the history of apples, the science behind apples. Mm. It's, it's, I don't know, I learned a lot from it. Mm -hmm. anyway, it's more than Johnny Appleseed. That's right, that's right. <laughs> um, for example, do you guys know where apples came from? Like where they started, where they began? Ah, Kazakhstan, Close. is that how you say it? Kazakhstan, yes. Um, and it was along a trade route. So, so people would, you know, people walking on the trade route would find this nice, sweet, tart, portable food and they'd pick it and walk and eat and chuck the seeds and apples are very vers uh, very um, resilient. So you drop the seeds and sometimes it would make it and sometimes it wouldn't, but that's kind of how it got around, you know? Very interesting, got that out of the book too. So um, the one thing she does in the book, which you've already seen, is she makes, she breaks um, apples down into these four categories, uh, which I hadn't seen before and I found very helpful. Um, Firm or tender, with firm holding their shape better, and tender breaking down easily as they cook. So if you want like sort of a saucy consistency, you use the tender, you know, or if you want it to hold up, you use the firm. And then of course, the apples are either sweet or tart. So if you want something sweeter, you know, self-explanatory, basically. Okay, but those guidelines will keep you in the proper sweet tart range in your recipe, and they'll assure the texture that you want. And sometimes you need both. Um, all right, apples are incredibly varied. They are the third most widely grown um, fruit in the world after bananas and grapes. Uh, they are one of the few fruits that are available in multiple varieties. And by that I mean, <laughs> if you go to the grocery store, there's raspberries, there's bananas, there's lemons, and then there's matsus and galas, and there's like a whole, you know, series of different apples. So they're so popular that people go for the different varieties as well, not just a raspberry, not just an apple, you know? Which I thought, I, I never thought about that before. Um, I'm, I'm using my cheat sheet, so bear with me. Um, so anyway, if you want, you want a quickie um, history and learning lesson on apples, that book is a great place to start. But of course, there's a whole other bunch on that table, which I haven't even looked at, so I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. What do you think about the do peel or not peel, giving pesticides, etc.? Well, um, I guess if you're worried, uh, some recipes call for the peel, and I guess there's a lot of flavor in the peel. For instance, the soup, the soup that we're going to start with, there's one apple in it, and, and the peel was left on it. Um, but if you're worried about pesticides, you could always just get uh, organic, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of our clients um, prefer us to use organic foods, mm. so... We tend to use organic foods quite a bit, or the, what is it, the dirty, is it the dirty 30? The dirty dozen, you dirty avoid dozen. the dirty dozen, and apples are one of the dirty dozen. So it's good, good to do organic. Sometimes I'll get that, uh, there's like a fruit and veggie wash, you can get a Trader Joe's, you can try and work off a little bit of the pesticide with that, you know. Um, I don't know how fully it removes it though. <coughs> so if you're worried, you can always use organic. Excuse me, do you have a helpful suggestion for 
pedestrians around here for organic. The one organic I know of, a neighbor <coughs> there has like no apples. It's really is sad. it the is it the frog pond? Yeah. Yeah, that's the only organic one that I know of. Have you been locally? by this year? There's like there's not much. They didn't have a good year, did yeah, they? Yeah, I don't know. Other years they've had like the frost and stuff. But yeah. This year I can't figure out why there's nothing. I there's mean, another not one that's um, up. It's like up Route Two. Uh, I, can't, I can't think of the name. If I think of it, yeah, I'll really tell you. Yeah, but that's the only one I know of locally, yeah. unfortunately. You know, they're nice, nice. They have good raspberries too. They do. Yeah, yeah. but that's, that's not raspberry talk. I feel bad for so we're going to start with, and um, on every table I left a sheet with the, the list of courses. And we're starting with a sweet potato, apple, and ginger soup. Really simple. It's just a pureed soup that's great for fall. Um, we used a sweeter apple in this soup. Um, I think I used a Spencer. This one's a Spencer too. And um, it can be firm or tart. It doesn't matter because you're boiling it down to nothing. Um, and the girls, our, our lovely helpers here, are going to come around and give everybody a little sample. They're in a cup you can just kind of knock it back. So save on the spoons. Um, and very simple. I roasted. Uh, I can tell you what's in it. And also, we, we brought a copy of the recipe. We didn't print out like 50 copies of each recipe, save a tree. So if you would like a recipe, I can, we can line them up here at the end and you can take a picture of it. Or we, uh, we left our cards on the tables. Send us an email. We would be happy to email you um, a copy. Okay? Uh, anyway, the soup has sweet potato, carrot, and apple. Those were chopped up and roasted in the oven for a half hour. Then I cooked down some onion, ginger, garlic, um, throw bay leaf in, a little chicken broth, a little cider vinegar, uh, sorry, apple cider, no cider vinegar, and put all the roasted veggies in there, cook it for another half hour, and then I um, um, blend, uh, homogenize it with a stick blender. Best invention known to me, a stick blender. You can use a regular blender, but then you're dirty in two things, so I like the stick blender. Um, and the girls will come around with that. The other thing we have to start with is an appetizer, and they are, uh, what you can see right here, and I don't want to get, I don't want to spill them. It's uh, blue cheese toast with apple butter and walnuts. Um, so, this this was my new adventure. Was I made apple butter last night? That was kind of cool. Um, let me show them in the jar. So this is this this is the apple butter. I took five pounds of apples. To, those were peeled and cored. Drop them up, throw them in a crock pot, about the size of this guy. Then you add sugar, apple cider, a bunch of spices like uh, cinnamon, a st whole star anise that you kind of fish out later on. Uh, what else? What else did I put in there? What kinds of apples? A mix. Yeah, which makes it a little more interesting than just one type. But you know, I guess if you've got five pounds of apples laying around. Mm -hmm. Not doing anything, so that'd be fine. There's so many nice spices in there. Mm -hmm. A little salt, nutmeg, ginger, lemon juice, apple cider, the star anise pod, and the sugar and the apples. Put it all in the crock pot. Um, get it going really on good on high for about an hour and a half. Turn it to low, leave it overnight, and you wake up and it's apple butter. So it's great. It, co it cooks down to a nice this nice brown mush, so you don't have to strain it or, or do anything to it. I'll show you. This guy. And I got six of these jars out of it. It says you should get 12. No. So. And that stays for a long time. Yes. And then I just, I just put the lid on it, put it in a pot of boiling water, cook it for 10 minutes, and it'll keep, you know. So um, the appetizer, it's just a little crostini. The blue cheese spread is, it's got some cream cheese, some blue cheese, and a little bit of bacon. So if you're not a meat eater, um, we have samples with just the apple butter and the, the walnut. So you smear a little of that blue cheese and bacon spread on, a little apple butter on top, and I'll top it with a walnut, and that's it. And our lovely assistants will be around with those momentarily. 
All right. I guess we're kind of screaming along here. Okay. So while the girls are serving those two lovely app, the soup and the appetizer, we'll get going on the uh, the main courses because it takes a little time for those to finish. Anybody have any questions so far? No? Okay. Question there, Mrs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it being October, I went with an Oktoberfest theme for the main course I made. Um, this is a it's a bratwurst sausage with braised apples and cabbage. I'm going to make it in this. This is an induction burner, very nifty that Miss Liz lent to me. Um, so in this pot, I've already browned. Thank you, girls. Yes, please. Thank you. I've already browned a um, pound and a half of bratwurst a couple of hours ago in this pot. I then browned a red onion, so you can just want to get the jump on it, you know, so we're not here till a million. Um, so now this dish calls for. Let me see, where is it, where is it, where is it? Ah, it calls for a tender sweet apple, my friend the Spencer here, to cook down into um, the, the cabbage and turn into like a sauce. And then a firm sweet, which this is a honey crisp, so that you get nice chunks too. So that, that's the, the two types of apple. And it calls for some red cabbage. So I'm gonna, Turn this up, get it going on. Oops. So we've got the browned onion in here with a little salt. Consult my recipe here. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of caraway seeds, because you know, it's Oktoberfest German. These double-sided teaspoons are the best, by the way. I love them. Teaspoon caraway seeds. Um, six tablespoons. This is apple cider vinegar. Six tablespoons. There's four tablespoons in a quarter cup, so I'm just going to start with the quarter cup. Four, five, six, that's apple cider vinegar. That's going to take a minute to come up to temperature. Uh, let's see, three quarter cup of apple cider. This is the same apple cider you guys are enjoying over there. So that's your base. Let that warm up, and while it warms up, I'm going to cut my cabbage. Actually, maybe I'll do the apple. So, I got this from the book. You, this is, this is my new fast way to peel apples. I just top, top it like so, and then cut the bottom, and then just use a peeler to kind of go around and come down the sides. I used to take the knife and like, you know, make the long thing, the, the long one piece of peel, but by the end my hand would be cramping. This is much faster. We're gonna add the cabbage and the apple together. Okay. That, and this is the Spencer sweet apple. Soft one. Your appetizer's delicious. Good. Thank you. Our lovely assistants. Did you pick a soft food cheese or 
So the blue cheese that I really wanted for this is it's an Irish cheese called Cashel Blue by um, Kerry Gold makes it, and it's perfect. And I could, of course I couldn't find it, so I I kind of used a um, combination of a a softer. I don't know. I was just I was kind of like poking cheeses. <laughs> <laughs> so I found um, a nice kind of soft one. I think it was Gr Great Hill or Great Hill cheese or something, blue cheese, and uh, um, a gorgonzola, six ounces. And you mix that with two ounces of cream cheese and um, it gets nice and mushy and then you can crumble the bacon into it. And the nice thing is you can do, like, if you're having a party or something, you can make the crostini ahead of time and you can make the cheese ahead of time. Like, I did, I did, I did those last night and early today so that, you know, you just kind of assemble it at the last minute and it's not that big of a deal. All right. So, come on, heat up. Thanks. So um, maybe we should do a little extra trivia. Go um, ahead. Thank you. Let's see. Dying over here. Does anyone know what the first American variety of apple was in the United States? I don't know if they still make it. It's, it's about, uh, wow, it's about 400 years old. It's the, called the Blackston Yellow Sweeting grown by the first British settler in Boston. It's called Blackston's Yellow Sweeting. Interesting. I don't know if they still make it. Um, the next variety was Roxbury Russet. We just planted one. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, well, I hope that it next? makes it through the winter. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> and uh, one staff farm has the Roxbury Russets. Oh, do they? That's the ah, second oldest apple. I didn't know that. So a lot of these apples, when they first came and started planting apple trees, um, they weren't used for cooking. They were used for cider so and vinegar for preserving. So a lot of the foods, you know, obviously back then, no refrigeration. They had to do a lot of preserving. So they used the apples to make the cider, Cabbage. to make the vinegar. Yep, there you are. Cider. And cider jack. Which is a nice little thing. Uh, <laughs> we we didn't we didn't have permission to serve that tonight. Otherwise, we would have. <laughs> uh, yeah, very interesting. I mean, there are fourteen thousand varieties of apples, uh, and that was that was back in 1905. So I'm sure there's an awful lot more since then. I feel like every few years there's a whole new slew of apples that I've never heard of that become available. And they're all interesting and delicious in their own way, um, but just interesting that there can be so many varieties and still... And we had none. Different. We started with nothing. The pilgrims brought them. Yeah, right, nothing. Very prolific, these apples. And um, did, do you know, you, know, you must know the Johnny Appleseed story. I mean, he was going around planting the apple trees, but it was, it was for cider. It wasn't to make sure everybody had apples. It was... It was for cider, so um, it's kind of an interesting piece. You think of him as like this kind of guy with the pot on his head, spreading joy and apples. Disney and movie. He was. He had a drinking problem, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He he was actually a missionary, um, and so back, I guess, in the what is it, 18th century, 1700s. You had to plant, so they wanted people to like, you know, go forth and settle and stuff. And to, lay, to take the title to the land, you had to plant 30 apple trees or 30 pear trees. They figured if, they, if you had to plant all those trees, you'd stick around for a while and, and, <laughs> and wait for harvest. Right. Um, so he went ahead of a lot of them, being a missionary to like, preach and stuff, but he also started planting orchards so that 
now these orchards were his. <laughs> <laughs> and he could sell them back to <laughs> the settlers. But he didn't collect on a lot of it. So tech, on paper, he was a rich guy when he died, but he didn't collect on a lot. Mm. <laughs> that was the missionary piece. So this, so now what I just put in is um, head of red cabbage, the, the soft and the, the firmer apple that we talked about. I'm going to mix these up. Um, let this cook for 10 minutes, and then I'm going to run it in the back and let it simmer for 20. So this is going to be a little while. So if you want to start on so your... So I can get working on the um, brown basmati salad with apples and mango chutney. So this, we're in Germany over here, yes. we're going to India over Thank here. Um, this is a, a very nice salad. It's like a nice combination of a little bit uh, spicy, a little bit sweet. It's got some fresh veggies in it, some sauteed veggies in it, some um, nice little aromatics. And I chopped up two different types of apples to go in there as well. Um, I, one of the apples is called a loam apple, and it's a firm tart. And the other one is a Spencer apple, which is a tender sweet. And I thought it would be nice to have a little combination of the two in there, just to cover all the bases, get all the, the points on your tongue excited about eating. Um, so this is just a simple throw together. I prepared all of the ingredients prior, so that it would be easy. We have the apples in here, uh, brown basmati rice, organic. Let me just throw that in. And uh, I don't know if we asked, does anyone have any nut allergies tonight? No? Okay, because this has cashews in it. So. Well, it's over there, so it'd be too late. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> don't eat the nuts. Don't eat the nuts, yeah. Um, all right, and then also we have some shredded carrots. Let's go right in. This is a nice, healthy little side dish or a nice light lunch. A lot of our clients have um, gluten issues, so we tend to use rice in a lot of our cooking, and rice salads, rice with breakfast even. Um, I just got back from Hawaii about a week ago, mm -hmm. and they serve rice with everything. Rice with breakfast, rice with lunch, rice next to your potatoes. It's strange, <laughs> <laughs> but it's delicious. So I added some uh, chopped up red pepper. That'll be a nice little sweetness and a crunch. I have here some sauteed celery and onion. Add that in too. And that smells good to you. I get a whiff of it. We're going to put in some, about a quarter cup of dried cranberries. A little more for good luck. I have some green onions that I chopped. Also some cilantro. Do you guys know where all those trays go? Yeah, cilantro is one of those herbs too. Sometimes people really enjoy it, but then there's there's a certain percentage of people that just can't, they think it tastes like, uh, like metal, metallic, so, or so, 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 yeah. So hopefully you guys like cilantro. Um, and then to finish, I have some roasted, salted cashews. I mean, people say you can substitute cilantro with parsley. I think they taste really different, but if you don't like cilantro, you know, yeah, I'd say you could do parsley or just leave it out altogether. And then for the dressing, this is what makes it really special. It has a little bit of mango chutney. There's some red wine vinegar, curry powder, garam masala, um, and salt and pepper. And it just gives it that little, little bit of spice, a little hit of heat. And, you know, they say, like, you stir up the dressings. We usually just put it in a nice 
jar, give it a shake, and there's. I love those jars. This you is the best. Do, you can do everything with them. Nope. That looks good. Yeah. I don't need to. Oh, I don't have a thing small need? enough. What do you Something need? to scrape the sides. Uh, yeah, mm. honey. I could just use my little knife. Mm. It's all right. You make do. Just to get every last bit. So then just give this a nice big stir all together. It's going to be good. Mm. I'm going to tell the girls to bring some plates. So is that something that's ahead? Yeah, the only thing about making this ahead is the apple. So if I were to make this for a party or something, I would do everything ahead of time and then add the apples at the last minute. The, I mean, it's dressed and all, but it's just that the apples, especially if you use one that's a little bit on the tender side, it might get too soft. So if you add the apples at the last, then they'll probably stand better. So where was the recipe for that from? Is that from the apple? No, this is sort of like two recipes that I merged together. And um, I, I, I don't know, maybe that's the scientist in me, just mixing potions and... It, yeah, so we have the recipes here. We can email it to you, or you can have a you can take a picture of it later. And this is actually like if you mix it ahead of time too, it would be nice. It would give it a chance to plump up those cranberries. And they're a nice sweet touch to the salad. So look how pretty. Nice and colorful. You first eat with the eyes, right? So is that like zero calories? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe two or three. <laughs> there, so we have our brown basmati salad with apples and mango chutney. So this, like I said, it would be a nice uh, light lunch. Also a side dish. So what we're going to do in addition to that, I'm going to prepare some chicken apple sausages. So, so I mean, I don't know. I'm the sausage queen of Stowe. I don't know if you know that. So um, I, uh, I usually just make Italian sausages, but I'm trying to venture out. And chicken apple sausages, are, they're kind of readily available. You see them, they're kind of common. But uh, you look at the ingredients, there's all kinds of strange things in there. I don't like things that I can't pronounce. So I thought it would be nice to prepare a chicken apple sausage just with the ingredients that I know. So I have, um, I prepared them earlier. I'll cook them now on my Foreman grill. Um, they're just ground chicken, two Granny Smith apples, those nice tart ones, um, a little bit of onion, some fresh sage, salt, pepper, and that's it. So. I mean, there, there's no strange things in there. You know what it's going to be. You know, you know what to expect. It's healthy. Um, and it makes a nice breakfast. It could be a nice um, lunch. It could be dinner. A little bit of everything. So I'll get these going next. I could, I mean, I could grill them on here or I could saute them. They're pretty easy to uh, work with. This is screaming hot right now, so I just want to... Would you like me to get the girls to start putting these on? Please. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. Set them up over here. I feel like we should be clapping in between because I watch so many cooking shows. <laughs> 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 so I made little pat yeah, I made little patties out of them. Um, you know, sausage. I mean, you can do them in a casing, but you don't necessarily have to. Um, if I do Italian sausage. I usually use the, you know, the big link and really, really long, but for something like this, it's easy just to do, to mix them up and do like a little, a little portion, especially for tonight now. Everybody gets their own. Our lovely assistants, we could use a little assistance. Yeah. By the way, they put extras over here if anyone wanted some more. I think we need more plates. Yes, your mom, for more of those plates. We're going to put a little bit of a little 
little scoop of rice on each plate, and then how are we doing on questions? Does anybody out. have any for, the for us? Thank you. So maybe I don't know, like that or so. Do you know how we just want to make sure everybody gets at least one. So just line them up here, and we'll don't. Do they blend like certain things? Like I'm just trying to conceive of how they. How new apple How are new varieties created? How do ah, they so, I you this um, the genetics of apples are really complicated. It, they're way more. There, there's like fifty-six thousand genes in, in an apple, and there's like twenty-five thousand genes in a human. So, and they, they do. They don't. So, if you if you take a seed out of an apple and you plant it. It doesn't. It's not a clone of the original fruit. It's. Um, it. It depends on what fertilized that seed. So the, the parent is going to be the, the flower on the tree, and then the pollen that comes, you know, on the little honeybee and bang right into the flower, and you get something called genetic recombination. And. You can get anything that comes out of that. Very varied. So, to keep, so that was my timer. Excuse me, I'll get back to that question. So this is the, the purple cabbage and the apples and the cider vinegar. I'm gonna add um, my sausage. And now that's gonna simmer for 20 minutes and that'll be that. Um, okay, so back to that question. Um, to keep an apple true, to, 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 to create a clone, to keep your clone going, you have to graft, which living in still, you guys probably heard of grafting. So they take the, I got, I got, let me make sure I get this right. I wrote this down because I thought it was so cool. You, um, you fuse a branch from the apple tree of choice to another tree. So, so the, the piece you want to propagate, the one you want to keep, that's, the, that's the, the graft. And you're fusing it to something called the rootstock, which is usually a tree that is well adapted to live in this area. So it's like hardy, you know, and this way you can take a graft from someplace else and pop it onto this hardy tree and it's already sort of adapted for this area. Um, so that's how you keep the clone going. But to, keep, to create new varieties, um, it's funny because in the, in the old days, it was just by chance, you know? And, and people would like search their orchards and they would, they would search the woods for new varieties because anybody that found a new variety um, could make a lot of money if it was really tasty. Um, now you, they do, there's, there's labs, there's, a, there's like a, a farm, I, I can't remember the, the exact name of it, but it's, it's in New York State. They specifically take a tree, flowers, they pull out the male portion of it so it doesn't self-pollinate, even though apples don't usually self-pollinate, but they make sure it doesn't. Then they take pollen from different trees to try and create like a new exciting variety. They, do it th they can do it that way. Or now there's genetic engineering also. You can genetically engineer in genes. I think they're mostly looking for re disease resistance and blight resistance. Or you can take something that you know, makes, makes a disease. As, as they're identifying genes, I guess, like whatever's making it delicious, they, um, they can splice that in. But Uh, well, to, to get the gene, you can probably take the whole apple and just, you know, there's techniques to isolate the DNA and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, you probably don't even want to use the seed in case it's not pure, you know. Um, but that kind of, it tends to freak people out when it's genetically engineered. So my guess is they're doing it the old-fashioned way, just to, like crossing um, the, the breeds, the varieties. Yeah, it was really interesting. So random. And then, so once they 
they get this really good, like a, a gala, then they just protect that. They make sure that nothing gets into it. Right. So it stays pure. And you keep the, you, you can keep grafting it. Sorry, I got to set my timer. I'm going to overcook my food. Um, you keep grafting it and like, taking that, that one apple and grafting and grafting and grafting and that's how you keep it going. And so in the old days, as, as Jana mentioned, there was so many varieties, like what, what did you say? Like, 14, yeah, and that was. They were trial and error too. I'm sure there were a few duds in there. Right. <laughs> and they would use a lot of those. A lot of those were not just good. They weren't very good for eating. Not attractive, kind of russeted and rough on the outside. Um, but they would use those for cider mostly. And then prohibition came. Mm. <laughs> and that ruined it. And that <laughs> was, yeah. And then came applesauce. Yes. <laughs> and apple butter. <laughs> and they started, so instead of breeding for cider, they started breeding for selling in stores. Mm. And it was, you know, what can transport well, what looks nice. So, so the varieties went from like this down to this. But now there's like a resurgence in, um, uh, heirlooms, heirloom varieties. So, with what? Right, right, right. They don't transport very well, but they really taste good. You know. Very interesting. I'm telling you, I learned so much reading this book. You didn't know we were deprived of all these beautiful varieties. it's true. Did you? <laughs> you got over it. Yeah. So um, that's really cool. I am going to take this in the back because Miss Gianna is going to need this burner uh, pretty soon. To we're going to start on the cooking up the dessert portion. How are your sausages? Okay. It's chicken too, so you really want to be careful. You cooking with me? I left. I wash my hands. You have to make sure that the internal temperature is 165. So hopefully, we're getting close. Sorry. Free ground. I would. I have a grinder. I would do that myself too if, if I had the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Free ground. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty Can you do me a salad? Available now. It's uh. It's not like exotic anymore. That might just be another minute or so. But. The, does anyone have a Foreman grill? Because this thing is brilliant. <laughs> it's so good. It doesn't stick. It's really nice. And transportable. So we couldn't use open flame here. So we had to get a little bit creative with some of our recipes and how we're cooking. Uh, the induction burner is amazing. Really cool how the way that works. And then this is another option for us tonight. So we're pretty lucky that we had a few different ways. Otherwise, we would have been making all salads and one induction burner <laughs> meal. This is going to be another minute. Oh, nice. Thank you. This isn't that's not deep enough. I'm going to have to cut into one of them. Do you girls have an extra dish? Just need one to cut into um, a sausage just to make sure it's good. Thank you. And what country produces the most apples? Hang up. China, but most of their apples are used for um, like apple juice. They actually import some of our eating apples. So done. Awesome. All right, so okay. you can get started with that. This will be done in a in a minute. Well, in like three minutes. I just cut one to make sure it was okay. All right, I'm gonna start getting dessert ready now. This is the last um, savory dish of the evening, Dee's cabbage <laughs> with sausage. So next on to everybody's favorite dessert. So we had 
thought a little bit about, you know, you know, here we are in Apple country, we need to do something that they haven't really had before. I mean, it's hard to top, it's hard to top a cinnamon apple though, you know, let's <laughs> face it. So we're going to do kind of a traditional, maybe, you know, all this traveling, we've been to India and Germany, now we're coming to Stowe. We're going to have a little um, vanilla ice cream. I'm making some sautéed cinnamon apples and we made a nice little um, caramel um, fondue for you. So we'll do a little drizzle over the top. So right now I'm using this induction burner and I'm melting some butter, quite a bit of butter in it. It's dessert, you can't skim. And while you are enjoying your food, we cut up five apples and these are uh, again the Spencer apples that we've used in a couple of the recipes. They tend to be a little bit tender and sweet so they're good for cooking. They'll break down a little bit so they'll get that nice consistency when you get when you get going. So, Is that so nice? just saute in some of these nice Spencer apples and give them a go for a little bit. Does this induction burner go up? You can crank it up. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Wow. It goes to twenty. That's oh. The top. Does it go to eleven? No. Yeah. <laughs> go <to> twenty-one. <laughs> Maybe the girls can. Hmm? Scoop. Yeah. 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 Is there a copy of the chicken sausage? Okay. No. 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 Yeah. So they sauteed a little bit. I'm just gonna add some water. We divide and conquer. You know what I mean? This will kind of yeah. help them cook down oh, a little has. bit. Oh, she's using it. <laughs> okay. One of them jumped out. Yep, brown sugar. A little cinnamon. I'm not big on measuring. <laughs> I eyeball it. Yeah. <laughs> If I could just have that glass of wine with it, it'd be so much better. And a little bit of nutmeg. Right. Uh, oh, okay. okay. So they've been in there for a while. It yes. is. And learn about them, you know? I love that. Maybe, Maybe the, the girls, ice cream came out a little early. Maybe the girls can start handing these out as we do them. We have oh yeah, oh, I do. Yeah. We're just keep those in okay. Oh yeah, I would suggest doing that. Oops. No. And there's like a teeny little bit of apples left. Let me just use those up. Okay. Thank you, my dear. Nice job. Make sure you save one for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, I'll okay. taste this one. Mmm. It's good. Whoa, we forgot the crumble. Ah, quick run. Don't eat the dessert yet. <laughs> we have a spoon here, put to sprinkle in, it. Put them in, uh, put them in these cups and put them on the table. Oh, did it. And we made apples. Yes. Only half hour over, not so bad. No, and I think we started a little bit late too. So, yeah. I mean, we got to account for that. <laughs> Thank you to our chefs and their recipes. If you haven't gotten a copy, we did send some out there. And their business cards, if you're interested, are on the little table at the front. Thank you all for coming. Sorry if you've been late. But oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for asking us. Yes. Yeah.